All right, I wanted to talk a little bit about slope and finding slope and the slope formula and where the slope formula comes from. Let's consider this. So here's your Cartesian plane. Here is some line. And let's put a few points on a couple points on that line. Let's see. There's a point. There's another point. All right. Then let's come down here to this value on the x axis, and we'll call that x1. I'll drop down to this value. This is x2. Come over here, y1. So these could be any two points on the line. So I'm using real general terminology here. So this, this point here, the x coordinates x1 and the y coordinates y1. They can be any numbers. This one, of course, is x2, y2. So what we want to know is how sloped this line is. And we do that by uh, measuring it in the distance it travels upwards in proportion to the distance it travels uh, horizontally. So the vertical change over the horizontal change. So we need to find that distance there, because that's how far it travels vertically. And then we'll divide that by how far it travels horizontally. Now, we know that y2 is that value, that distance. y1 is this distance. So the distance we're looking for must be the larger number, y2, minus the smaller distance, y1. So you take this big distance, y2, all the way from the x-axis up to y2, and you subtract out this smaller piece that goes from the x-axis to y1, and what you're left with is the distance between the two y values. So that's y2 minus y1, whatever that distance is. And we'll make a similar argument down here. We'll say this long distance, which goes to x2, minus this shorter distance, which goes to x1, will leave us with the distance we're looking for, the distance that this line travels between these two points from uh, x1 to x2. So that's that distance. So the proportion is what we call the slope. And we use M for slope. I'm not sure why <laughs> M stands for slope, but it does. And the distance it travels vertically we see is Y2 minus Y1. And that's divided by the distance that it travels horizontally, which is X2 minus X1. Sometimes this is written as the change in Y divided by the change in x. So sometimes you see that notation. These are little triangles that denote change. And then sometimes simply just the rise, how far it rises divided by how far it runs. So the rise being the vertical distance divided by the run, which is the horizontal, just like we explained over in this picture the horizontal distance. But either way, <clears throat> this is the formula we get. The x2, the x1, y1, and the x2, y2 are two points. So if you're given two points on the line, the slope is fairly easy to find. Uh, I have a couple of videos up about finding specific points based on, uh, excuse me, finding slope based on two points. Slope has uh, a lot of uses in the construction industry. One uh, that I can think of is for wheelchair ramps. 
uh, the code for wheelchair ramps allows for one inch of rise for every 12 inches of run. So when you build a wheel wheelchair ramp, it can run when it goes 12 inches in distance, it can only increase one inch in height. So that's gonna give that a slope of a wheelchair ramp is gonna be one over 12. That's the proportion of the right one inch rise over the 12 inch run. So that's why you, when you see those built properly, they're very long because they have to increase uh, incline very slowly. You also see uh, different roof lines on different houses. Some roof lines don't have a lot of pitch to them at all. And those I believe are typically referred to as like a 512 maybe. if five inches of rise for every 12 inches of run. And then there's a, a, uh, a 712 roof. So this one would have a slope of five rise, 12 run of five twelfths. This would have seven twelfths. And they get steeper than that. Sometimes the Cape Cods, you know, that have dormers in them. Sometimes they're very steep. And I believe they may be a 912. I am not a construction, uh, not a contractor, but I'm pretty sure this is how it works. So that has a slope of 9 twelfths. So a lot of people, whether they realize it or not, are using slope uh, all the time when they're building things. So it has value. This is not just an exercise in algebra. It has uh, value. Now you can also find the slope. Well, you can find it with two points just by using this formula. Say your points were, let's see, my x1, my y1. I'll make that if that's one, three, say, and then you get another point. And this is not necessarily the line that's drawn over there. I'm just making these points up. Say that's four, five. Then the slope of that line would be this y2, three, minus y1. Look what I did. I picked one that's going to be zero and then x2 minus x1. So I get zero over three, which is zero. And that's actually gonna be a horizontal line. A horizontal line has slope zero. So if you plotted both those points, you'd see that they lie on the same horizontal line. Let me go over to my calculator. go. I have a line drawn on here. Um, you can calculate from just a graph, even if you weren't given this equation. Let me get my pen here. Okay, we were, suppose you didn't have this equation and you just had the graph. You could find the slope by counting rise over run. Now, sometimes you're approximating it because that uh, those points are not going to land on whole numbers, so you're estimating. But sometimes you can find points that do land on whole numbers. And I see, let's see, here's one right here. That point looks like it lands on whole numbers. I believe that is zero comma three. So it goes up to three there. And let's see if we can find another one. This one right here looks like a possibility. That appears to be negative one there and this appears to be negative two here. So we could use these two points to count our rise over our run and we could just count blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one rises eight and it runs one, two, three, four and it runs four. So the slope is eight over four is two. And note that positive slopes increase from left to right. If our line was decreasing from left to right, that's a negative slope. That'll show up as a negative slope, anything that goes downhill. A horizontal line, slope of zero. And the one, I think kind of weird one, is the vertical line. Vertical lines appear to have a lot of slope, but actually they have undefined slope. So sometimes it's called undefined and sometimes it's called uh, no slope. 
And that's because when you plug two points from a vertical line into a slope formula, uh, you get zero in the bottom of the fraction. And we know that that's undefined. So that has no slope. And the vertical lines, the format, what they always look like equation wise is x equal to some number. For example, this one appears to be going through x equal to negative six. And that's because every point on here as y changes, x is always negative six. So every point on this line would have an x coordinate of negative six. Y would go from positive infinity to negative infinity, but x would always be negative six. When you're looking at this horizontal line, y is always six. X goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. Y is always six. So the horizontal line has the format Y equal to some number. That's horizontal. And X equal to negative six, when it's just X equal to some number, that is a sign that you're looking at a vertical line. And remember the slope of the horizontal line is zero and the slope of the vertical line is undefined. And then you have everything in between, positive and negative. The steeper the line, the greater the slope.